sometimes I feel like I get cancer from listening to stupid people talk. It's like if Elon Musk had five brothers, do you give a fuck who they are? I don't. Warning. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Hello there, party people. But today's episode of Mr. Rogers' Black Metal Neighborhood is teaching children to worship growth hormone. Let's see here. This is gonna be a basic informal review of the nuts and bolts of growth hormone. This is not supposed to be a super complicated thing with growth hormone. One of the biggest concerns I have is, to me, using anabolics or HRT without using growth hormone is severely R word. To me, it's a complete travesty that anyone would ever think about using anything without using growth hormone with it. This is not for someone who's been using growth hormone for years. Although you might find something useful to it, it is for the beginners who have no clue what they're doing. And if this is new information to you, you're a beginner. What is growth hormone? Growth hormone is a peptide hormone that's released by your pituitary. It comes in six different versions. It's basically there to liberate energy sources because it helps liberate fat from fat cells and it stops using carbohydrates as a fuel source primarily. And the goal of it is to give you the energy for IGF-1's functions. Now, IGF-1 is a downstream effect of growth hormone. Go growth hormone will go to the liver and IGF-1 is produced. This is usually, it needs estrogen to do this and you will find that in the muscle, the same situation will occur. Growth hormone goes to the muscle and IGF-1 is is locally expressed in the muscle. Some people will call it MGF. Really, the exons and introns are the same for IGF-1 and MGF. It's just the expression of the exons is different for MGF than it is for IGF. So what is GH? So GH, when people say GH, what they mean is synthetic GH. GH that's used for the purpose, well, I'll get to that when I get to the why, but for the what. what we're using the 22 kilodalton version of growth hormone that is 191 amino acids. This is the best one for growing muscle. There's a 192 version. It's not as good. I don't remember why it's not as good. You don't need to know why it's not as good because they ain't making it. And as far as the 20 kilodalton, the 6 kilodalton, the 16 kilodalton, and the two other kilodaltons, it doesn't really matter. So we only need one, and that's the 191 22 kilodalton amino acid sequence growth hormone. If you were to shoot a whole bottle, 10 units of GH, and then three hours later get your blood tested, and the blood test shows that you've got 30 GH level in your blood, that GH is pretty fucking good. Like maybe the shittiest GH out there is 26, and the best GH out there is 36. Let's say serostim's 36. So 30 versus 36. So if you used five units, and got 15, but you use serostim's five units and got 18, why not just use six units of what your generic is to get 18? Do not spend 10 grand a month on fucking growth hormone because you're getting it from an HRT clinic or some doctor who's a schmuck. Just get the cheapest shit and it'll work if it's real GH. And the way you test that is you shoot the whole bottle, you go over to the, get your blood drawn, and if it says that it's 30, it's good enough. If you need 11 units to hit 30, good enough. Who should use GH? Well, every single man and woman over the age of 20 should be on growth hormone. People are like, oh my God, he's crazy. You can't just point those blinking statements like that. Here's the deal. It stops you from aging. Raise your hand if you want to age. Then don't use growth hormone. If you don't want to age, use growth hormone. People are like, but it causes cancer. It doesn't cause cancer. IGF-1 will amplify the speed that a pre-existing tumor grows. It doesn't mean you're going to get cancer. You get cancer from walking outside, breathing our air, drinking our water, eating our food. Sometimes I feel like I get cancer from listening to stupid people talk. One thing I know for sure is if it slows the aging process and it makes you healthier longer, I mean, just look at Sylvester Stallone when he's in his 60s. He looks better than most guys in their 30s. Look at Sylvester Stallone now. Go watch Tulsa King and you tell me that's a 78 year old man and tell me how bad GH is for you. It's like, don't use it. Don't use it. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. 
This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. How are you going to grow the muscle you inject if you don't inject a muscle at all? So if your goal is to grow muscle, you would inject in the muscle. So if the purpose is to grow, then the purpose is to get the most IGF out of your GH you can, which would mean you would inject it when you would get the best bioavailability before bed so that it peaks approximately two hours later when you've got the surge of binding protein three and then that will have the best yield. Now, there's an argument that if you do it first thing in the morning before fasted cardio, you will burn more fat if you're in a calorie deficit. This may be true. However, if it's got a four hour half-life shooting and the maximum benefit you can get is from 1.5 units, then if you were to shoot it at, at midnight and you shot six units at midnight, it would be the equivalent of three units at 4 a.m. It would be the equivalent of 1.5 units at 8 a.m. So if you were going to shoot 1.5 at 8 a.m. or shoot eight before bed or six before bed, it's the same 1.5 at 8 a.m. either way. The HRT level for GH for men is two units. The HRT unit um, you amount for women is one unit. So that means if you're just HRT, you're only going to be using like 20 milligrams or 30 milligrams of test and two units of GH before bed anyway. So that's why you could use the same insulin syringe and inject the muscle you want to bring up the most. If you're a woman, you'd be using 0.5 milligrams of testosterone and one unit of GH before bed. And you pick the muscle you want to grow the most. Simple. The only real side effect of GH at normal doses is water retention. And the list is super long, like difficulty breathing, painful cramping, carpal tunnel, edema in the ankles. That's all one thing. They just write it out in a confusing way because it's the way the, the patients perceive it. It's not the way it is. The way it is, is you're retaining more sodium at the kidney so you have water retention. If you're already taking Talmasartan, which you probably should be if you're using anabolics, the Talmasartan will fix this angiotensin renin system issue of the GH. And if it isn't enough, you could always take some aquaside, which is hydrochlorothiazide, like 6.25 milligrams a day. That's pretty much it. A healthy immune system produces natural killer cells. Natural killer cells kills off cancer before it grows in the first place. If any of this was confusing, rewatch it. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, there is a full length version available. If you didn't like it, you're in our word. This is just the summary, just the tip, if you will. This is the tip of the iceberg of knowledge that I have bestowed upon you. Please accept and absorb the rest of this iceberg. Now, a lot of people are selling this stuff. They are selling courses on the material. This is free. You don't have to pay if you click the link. It's not a funnel that you're not going to get duped into giving your credit card or your email. You just get to watch the video. If you like the video, watch the whole series, watch it in order, the how to grow. There's numbers for a reason. Hopefully you completed preschool and you can count. So you watch them in order for a reason. That's why they're filmed in that reason, in that order, because they go from most important to least important. And as you suspected, the PED videos at the end, I guarantee you the answer to your problems is not more steroids. It's better lifting. If it's missing, it's probably because you're watching a censorship platform. Switch to one of the uncensored platforms to see the PED video. I believe it's video five and I believe it's video 10 are not in the censored platform. So you are in a censored environment if you're missing those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to get a consult by clicking the link in the description box.